start by doing what's necessary, then doing what's possible, and suddenly you are doing the impossible. Francis of Assisi. Hello, I'm Tamara Michelle, and this is Real Conversations Podcast, created in Dauphin, Manitoba. On our adventure today, I travel to Winnipeg Osis to talk with Alex Litwin of Willpower Media to discover what has happened at the Winnipeg Osis Post Office and why this is such a big deal for a small town to lose service, even if it's only temporary. Thank you to Alex Litwin for sharing his story and Karen Hudala for assistance. Thank you to our show sponsors. Bankert Marketing, Dr. Brenna and Three Graces Medispa, Real Security Solutions, Right Side Equipment of Dauphin, Oil Depot of Dauphin, Roofs Furniture and Appliances of Dauphin, Tri Family Health, Beauty and Fine Gifts of the Paw, Ramsey's Health and Fitness of Dauphin, Cloud Nine Canna Supplies of Dauphin, and Hearts to Nature Fine Art Nature Photography. So welcome back to Real Conversations today. I'm here with Alex Litwin. Hi, Alex. How are you? Yeah, how are you doing? I'm very good. Thank you. So I'm coming out here kind of, uh, it was almost impromptu. Last time we yeah. had set like a three weeks ahead of time schedule, yeah. but we kind of set this up in a matter of days yeah. um, regarding the closing of your local post office with Canada Post. Yeah. So tell me, um, you've been very busy. I have been. <laughs> Yeah. I went today and I did a whole bunch of research. I read all the news stories that were up. There's one on CBC uh, reg- regarding the closure. There's one on CTV News yeah. as well. And um, you had also put a post uh, with your outrage uh, based on the ability for you to get your mail, uh, how it's something that's really important to you, something that you've been doing for a long time. Yeah, I, well, what happened is that we had a close the post office on the weekend. And they know us, and we had to go to Dolphin, which is 58 kilometers away, to get our mail. Now, for me, this is a part of when I, for one, and my ecosystem, which makes it very hard for me to afford anything, never went into gas to go to to go to the mail. We have a physical disability as I do. When you can do something all by yourself, you can do this in the pride and accomplish it. And with me not being able to go to the mail, um, that was not. And ever since I lost China, so much of my independence is that I have gone, that this is something that I had, it was taken away from me. Due to government bureaucracy. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, the go get it and I have to get it. I find myself, I mean, I put a very simple yet, very point, very point in the letter on Facebook. And I express my uh, outrage and how this is a bad note for me. I want to be out of this for a second. But there are a lot of people in this area who are, who are uh, over with other disabilities and the bed's not easy for them to move out. So I was playing. I play for them and not with myself. So after I did my, my post on my list, I had to immediately have to reach out to me. And we did the music. Um, that's where we are today. So yeah. Well, that's that's and that's a lot of work that you've done in a very short period of time in advocating, like with the news media. Yeah. And it's really nice that they would do the story so quickly. I and I like the fact that they actually did um, they did an interview with you for CTV. So yeah. you know, there's a there's a clip of you just discussing some of what you're saying today. One thing I want to use CTV a lot of problem because I've done a lot of TV interviews in the past. But the best CTV was the first one uh, that actually put the, uh, the closed captioning mm-hmm. in my eye uh, when I was speaking. No, I mean, the last week, mostly I speak, I speak relatively well, but the other times, especially people that never have spoken to me before or heard me speak that they can understand anything I say. 
Aí como eu falei isso, meu raio do da Papai TV. Se tu é pra mim, é mais do Oscar. Yeah, I agree. I thought that was wonderful because, um, like you said, you don't want to have any barriers. Years ago, um, I flew out to petitions and bon golf and uh, conversations. I was able to get out of the lab and, uh, and the automatic doors put in the the post office. And uh, this is awesome. Because before this, sorry, before this, I wasn't able to go into the world. I was, I had to go in front of the window and wave like I Yahoo just to try and get my hand mail. Yeah. So when I got the rap and all I had to was put in, it felt really good. Because not only was I helping myself, I was helping so many other people in that area. Yes, I, I agree with you on that point. Um, I think it's an interesting observation, even that uh, in Dauphin, we don't have an automatic door at the post office that I'm aware of. I believe we have to open it, but they do have a ramp. They do have a ramp, but they don't have um, anything to open the door well, from the outside. Maybe, so maybe there should be the next thing I come in the episode. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, well, yes, you should. I think you should make a can I, can I come in episode there. That'd be yeah. great. Um, so before I came here today, I was also doing a little bit of research research on some of the legislation. So Canada Post is actually a crown corporation. So it is federal government. Yeah. Um, they have some things outlined in the, it's called the Canada Post Corporation Act. Okay. And they have a right to make money, but they have a monopoly on letter mail. But they also have an obligation. They are mandated to deliver mail by the means that you have. So say you and I were discussing this. Yeah. I live in an area where uh, I'm rural in, yeah. in the Dauphin area and I get three day delivery and I'll never get five day delivery. That's been pr a precedent that was set. It's grandfathered basically. Yeah. But right now where Winnipegosa stands, it is a five day delivery at the post office yeah. and everybody has a post office box. Yeah. Right. And an address mm -hmm. and they can get their mail there. So um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, how that can be argued either way. But I, there is law in there. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you that that little bit of a tidbit. You know, one thing that really, that really upset me and a lot of other people was the lack of notice. Like I said earlier, they announced it on Sunday morning on the radio of a long, of, of a long weekend. Now really, who the heck listens to the radio? I mean, some people do, but I find it very suspicious that they wouldn't make a big announcement at least give the town a heads up. Yeah. That we could see this coming. So I found that they up there. And you were saying when we were talking a bit earlier that um, they did not put any notices. Go ahead. So you were saying a little bit earlier that they um, have not given any notice at the post office here locally. There was no notices put up at the post office. Is that correct? No. You would go to the board of the email and there was a sign on the door that said, sorry, close the day due to unforeseen circumstances. And that's it. And they did that, but a day here and a day there. And then all of a sudden it was shut down. Huh, interesting. And the only notification was through the local radio station yeah. in Dauphin. Okay. So, yeah, that's, I don't know. Like you said, you use the word sneaky, kind of maybe a little bit, hey? Yeah. yeah. It, it appears that way. Yeah, for sure. Um, so you have had some success with uh, with having this covered by CTV and CBC News, yeah. uh, and they have responded, I guess, with pressure from the media. Uh, what is the local post office doing now? As of now, it's only three days a week, Wednesday, and they say 
they're doing their best to find someone for the other two days. But as of right now, we have three days a week. So okay, and they're saying that that's temporary. They're saying, but I'll believe in my I hope not, but yeah, I, I but you never know when this day is. Well, and we were kind of chuckling about. Um, I would say, like our current government, our current federal government is wanting to be zero net. Yeah. Or zero. Sorry, they want to be um, zero emissions. Zero emissions. Yeah. So they want to go completely green by twenty thirty. Yeah. And. The irony is not lost on me because here you have 700 residents in the city of Winnipeg Osis going to a local post office, yeah. which is within a kilometer of probably where they live, maybe some a little bit farther if they're rural. Um, for people that don't know the situation from Winnipeg Osis to Dauphin, I drove here from Dauphin and it's about a 50 minute ride, five zero, and that's going 100 kilometers per hour. Yeah. It is not close. <laughs> it is not close. It's actually no. quite far. And uh, to have to make that drive there and back. Uh, and you have uh, like a place to get some of your groceries. You have a meat market here. Like you're, you're very oh, yeah. sufficient in your community. Yeah, there's two stores. There's a little bit of everything. Yeah. So, I mean, you have a gas station. You have, um, I know you have mechanics here. Like you have all sorts of, of uh, you have an incredible restaurant. Of course, let's not forget about Mossy River Restaurant, yeah. right? Um, so, you know, you don't really have this need to go to Dauphin. No, you don't. I mean, you do pay a little bit more. But if you wanted to see uh, there's no reason for you to leave town. Yeah, and with the price of gas, it might be more efficient to stay, oh, right, and have yeah. them bring everything in, even if it costs a little bit more yeah. than Dauphin. So, yeah, I just thought that was just interesting in and of itself uh, to take 700 people and ask them to drive 68 kilometers, you said? 58. Oh, 58 kilometers. Yeah. So 58 kilometers to pick up their mail. Yeah. That isn't very green. No, it's, <laughs> uh, it's kind of brown. It's very brown. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, um, Alex, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today again. Um, I know we're going to be meeting you again for another episode, but I wanted to fit this one in. I felt I felt it was really uh, timely and important, um, like you said, not just for people with disabilities, but the elderly, for uh, people in the community. It represents, you know, at least 700 people. And, you know, according to the Canada Post Corporations Act, it looks like it is within your rights to get delivery. So. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Hey, by the way, I just want to say to the government, when they make decisions, don't think about what's easier for them and how, how to make life easier for the people that they work with. Think about the people that they work for. What? Yeah. They work for the people. And if we do that one, if we support each other, well, have a very well, but until that happens, if it happens, we all have to stand up for our lives. And so thank you for helping me showcase a little one of the ghosts. Absolutely. Anytime, Alex. All right, have a good day. You too. After interviewing Alex, I decided to head over to the Winnipeg Osa's post office to see if I could catch a few streeters. That being people on the street that wanted to talk to me about what's happening in Winnipeg Osis. So I'm here outside of the Winnipeg Osis post office uh, talking to Beth of Winnipeg Osis. How are you doing, Beth? I'm doing well, thanks. Good, good. Um, so yeah, I just have a question about, um, there's kind of been a bit of a, a ruckus kind of raised with the post office. It was mm -hmm. closed a little bit earlier. Uh, was that last week, I think? Yes, most of last week. Most of last week. And it was very abrupt. There was no signage. There was no explanation. It was just kind of closed until further notice. That's right. Um, and uh, I just had the opportunity to talk with uh, Alex Litwin and we were discussing how that will complicate his life and many of the elders in the community. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel being a person from Winnipeg Osis? How would that affect you having to travel all the way to Dauphin to get your mail? Well, I actually uh, represent the rural community, really. So I travel 10 or 15 minutes in to get my mail right now and to go to Dauphin, that'd be 60 kilometers one way. Uh, I only go into Dauphin every couple weeks and often on a Sunday. And um, uh, I also work 
from 7 to 4. And so trying to get in to Dauphin uh, during working hours, that's very frustrating. Yeah. That is very frustrating to me. And I've noticed, like, just watching people come in and out of the post office, like, people have mail, they have parcels. Like, there's a lot right. of, of mail and parcels that come through this actual Oh, that's office. right. Because of how rural we are, we use it for a lot of our shopping. Like, right? right. Um, groceries, Amazon, everything, right? Okay. We're so far from any major centers other than Dauphin that we rely on the post office a lot, really. So, in your opinion, it would be very important to keep this service open for people in the community? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Okay. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, I really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. So I have Mac here with me uh, in front of Canada Post here in Winnipegosis. And um, Mac, you were willing to talk to me a little bit about how not having postal service will affect you if this was to continue. Yes, I, uh, I have my opinions on it, yes. I think that, for example, to be able to not, to, to have to drive to Dauphin and get our mail, 60 kilometers there, 60 kilometers back, with the price of gas being at an all-time high, it's so silly, uh, scratches my head and wonder why people are in charge. To have it closed down, Temporary, as far as I know, the person that is in charge of that uh, did not think ahead in planning to have somebody fill in to to train as a temporary part-time staff, give them a little bit of money, a stu student, and they can put the mail in the mailbox. It's not rocket science. And and uh, without notice, from my understanding, after talking to Alex. Yes, uh, I just, I was in Winnipeg working. I come back home here and my wife says, uh, no more mail for a while. I said, oh yeah, okay, why? And then she said, well, one person is on a holiday, one person is sick. I said, so why didn't they train her? So we're hoping that this is going to be a temporary, uh, and now they have, and now they're open three days a week. So I understand they're open Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Originally they were going to be closed until further notice, uh, yeah. c completely closed and you were going to have to drive. Now they've opened three days a week and they're looking for uh, someone for the Monday, Tuesday shift. So that's better than nothing. Yes. My, my question is, um, how detrimental would this be to your community, to everyone that you know here, which is about, I believe, 700 people that it affects, uh, half of them elderly. Um, there are some people that have disabilities as well. I've seen more than one wheelchair running around oh, yes, in the community. Yes, yes. Um, and, and this has also accessible, it's an accessible post office. So people that are have a, ability issues, they can get in. There's a button, there's an automatic door, there's a ramp. Like it's accessible for people that want to use it. How detrimental is that to this community if the services were to suspend, you know, indefinitely? It would be devastating. It would be uh, enough to make me decide to move uh, because um, by rights we should have our mail whether I live here or out in the woods, we have a right to our mail. Yeah, and that's under the Canada Post Corporations Act yes. actually, as well. They do have, they are mandated by law to provide mail service and the mail service that you currently have. Uh, I do know that just from reading some and of the legislation. And it is good service here. Yeah. When it's working, best. Okay. Happy. Everybody's happy. Yeah. But you take that away and it's, uh, it's going to hurt more than uh, what they really think. It's going to make a lot of people's lives is miserable. How can a person in a wheelchair has a wife? She goes to town by law. She can't get her husband's mail. By law, you got to have photo ID mm -hmm. because you're tampering with the mail. I yeah. mean, it's common sense. Yeah. So I have to go get my mail, come home, 120 clicks. Then my wife has to go get her mail, come home, 120 clicks. Yeah. No, no, it would be, I would say, to heck with it. Yeah. It's devastating. There's a lot of poor people here. Well, I shouldn't say poor. There's just a lot of uh, lower income families that yeah. it's hard on. I mean, you can't just, they don't have cars. Yeah. They, some of them don't have internet. Yeah. So how are you supposed to get your bill because yeah. I don't believe in internet bills anyways I, I like a bill I can read and open yep oh there it is that's how much I owe now I'm supposed to get that then pay it 
And for another example is my banks in, in Dauphin. So what, every two weeks, I got to go to Dauphin, pay my bills. But I don't have the mail. I have to first go over there, get it all. and then, No, it would be crazy. I would say goodbye, yep. see ya, no more. And this is a beautiful community. That's why I moved here. I, I never been here before. Five years ago, I came, I drove through the town. I said, wow, I like it here. Yeah, with the golf course, well, you've got the river, you've got the lake. It's just peace, quiet, and the people are so darn friendly. <laughs> Even the little kids will wave at you when you come into mm. town. Well, Mac, I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me today. And, oh, it's uh, a pleasure, man. Pleasure, yeah, it's, yeah, it's been wonderful to meet you. Thank you, man. Right. Thank you very much. And I hope this uh, helps a lot of people, too. Dr. Brenna and Three Graces Medispa has been inspiring love, confidence, and health and humanity since 2019. Dr. Brenna's skin therapists have the advanced knowledge required to revitalize and rejuvenate your skin. Radio frequency, microneedles, chemical peels, and oxygen neo superfacials are just a couple of the treatments we offer. To learn more about Dr. Brenna and Three Graces Medispa, visit our website at threegraces.ca or call us at 204-572-5774 for a free consultation. Thank you to our show sponsors, Bankert Marketing, Dr. Brenna and Three Graces Medispa, Real Security Solutions, Right Side Equipment of Dauphin, Oil Depot of Dauphin, Roofs Furniture and Appliances of Dauphin, Try Family, Health, Beauty and Fine Gifts of the Paw, Ramsey's Health and Fitness of Dauphin, Cloud Nine Canna Supplies of Dauphin, and Hearts to Nature, Fine Art, Nature Photography. See you next week.